Good morning, folks. Let's start with earthquakes. Iran and Pakistan have taken moderate tremors this morning. The Virgin Islands have seen more four magnitude quakes in the last 10 days than in the entire time I've watched combined. We also had some mid-sized tremors off Chiapas, Mexico. I can't keep track of all the weather records being broken anymore, so I'll just link this below and let you have some fun. Each marker is a different record for August. Bit of sad news out of Florida. Despite rescue efforts, 17 of those 22 stranded pilot whales have died. Isaac is bringing a lot of rain, but unfortunately it's not enough to end the drought. Having a look at some of yesterday's rain records from Isaac, Illinois topped the charts for widespread record rainfall, although Galveston, Texas with nearly an inch in 10 minutes must have been a heck of a downpour. Sky watchers, here's where the inner planets are right now. I've got it skewed this way so that we can zoom out and tilt slightly to reveal Neptune on the opposite side of Earth from Mercury. Zooming back in and lining the Earth up here, eight days from now on September 10th, Mercury conjoins the Sun right about the same time that Jupiter, Venus, and Mars form a near-perfect lineup that is just on the Earth side of the Sun as we look here. Speaking of the Sun, the last 24 hours were comparatively boring. We do have a serious active region in the center there, and having a look at it, you would think that's it up top, but Nope, she got stage fright, paving the way for an explosion of sunspots behind her. NOAA has labeled this beta gamma, but as of 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the central region looks delta with both polarities within that central umbra. We'll have to watch out for flares, and yes, I suppose we'll watch out for a CME impact as well. This is a truly spectacular sight, so big in fact that from about a third of the way around the sun from Earth's magnetic connection point, we're still taking proton bombardment near the poles, as you can see here on the D-region absorption. I called this a halo eruption yesterday and realized that might be new terminology for some. That occurs when this satellite sees bright ejecta flying out of all sides of the disk blocking the sun's brightness. Earth-facing halo eruptions almost certainly deliver some geomagnetic compression. Luckily, our impact should be mild to moderate. Some auroras, perhaps, could happen today, per NASA's uh, guess, or tomorrow, per NOAA's. Eyes open. That's the news, folks. Be safe.